Hello and welcome to a brand new podcast called 21st Century Football. This podcast is all about celebrating the best of the world's most beautiful game, but only if it happened in the 21st century. This series is all about championing the greatest footballers of the last 20 years. Our regular panel of guests will chat about the player's career, their honours and incredible stats. And today we're starting with one of the world's greatest strikers and icons. That's what it says here anyway. Zlatan Ibrahimovic. I'm Will Brazier. On today's show, we have Adam Brown. Adam, how are you? I'm good, Will. I'm good. Are you? Are you ready to talk about Zlatan? I'm always ready to talk about Zlatan. Um, Statman Dave. I'm good as well. Um, Zlatan. I didn't ask that. Um, what a man. <laughs> yeah. When well, he played for Man United, so has that piqued your interest a little bit more? A little bit, I'd say so. Obviously, a little bit unfortunate not to lift the Europa League um, with injury. Right, okay. He missed that, a lot yeah. of the tournament. But yeah. Oh, we're going to talk about that. Let's leave your red agenda at the door. <laughs> uh, we kick off this episode like we do with all of our episodes, uh, where I just get the Wikipedia up and sort of give us a little refresh of uh, you know where he's born, what he's done, uh, what he likes to eat. Um, Zlatan's one was very large, so we've had to cut it down. That's the Wikipedia day for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not his balls. <laughs> oh, God. Not his, uh, did you say not his balls? We'll, we'll talk about it later on. Good. We don't, we don't want to dive into all the action now. Come it's on. Not, it's not one of them crude shows. Um, Zlatan Ibrahimovic was born on the 3rd of October 1981. He's a Swedish professional footballer who plays a striker for Serie A club at Milan. Ibrahimovic is widely regarded as one of the best strikers of his generation. Immediately. Adam, what do you think of that statement? Uh, I, I, I agree with it. I mean, he was born in Sweden, presumably, <laughs> uh, in 1981. Uh, no, I do agree that, you know, he's got this, you know, if we're talking iconic players of the 21st century, for me, he's one that immediately springs to mind, you know, um, regardless of, of stats, he just, he, he, his whole image, um, everything that goes with it, the, everything that you get from Zlatan when you sign him as a club, you get this kind of, brand that immediately kind of heightens everything so yeah he, he's definitely going to go down as one of the the iconic players no matter what just because he's got that something about him there's not many players who've got that kind of aura and that air about him and Zlatan is definitely one of them w regardless of whether you rate him or not he, he's, he's, he's going to always be you know someone who's going to cause talking points well let's have a look at those top line stats Dave he scored 570 career goes go goes He's having a go to score some goals. Yeah, he is. Well, you know. <laughs> he scored over 570 career goals, including 500 club goals. Um, but he's still going, Dave. He is still going. Can we get the big 600? I think so. You know, w watching him in Serie A, he's still absolutely fine. Milan are quite direct to him. He's more of a target man these days, looking for long balls up to him. And he's bringing people into play. It, it suits their style. It suits the players around him. But in terms of Zlatan, you mentioned the thing before, you know, one of the greatest strikers of our generation. I completely agree with that. If you were to design a striker, tall, quick, Amazing touch, athletic, flexible, um, can score any type of goal, power in his shots. That's him. So if you're making a making a player on the PlayStation on FIFA or any other game, like Pro Evolution Soccer, of course, because Latan used to be really good on Pro Evolution yeah. Soccer. Um, you know, you, that's exactly what you create. He's the guy. But has he underachieved in his career? <sighs> good God. I, 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 I don't know. It's weird. I think that you always get a bit of, like, baggage with him as well, don't you? Because... Like to kind of go back to what I said before, you, you're very aware that when you sign Zlatan, it has to be about Zlatan. So straight away, you just think, how are the other players in the team going to kind of react to him being there? You are taking on a lot. I mean, you're going to get guaranteed goals. Even when he came into United, you know, there was a few people going, is he too old? He passed it. Have they got him 10 years too late? But I knew straight away he was going to be, you know, you knew he was going to be United's top scorer that season. You knew he was going to bag goals no matter where he goes. So I don't know. I think that, what would you say Zlatan's, you know, there's a lot of players, if you look at some of the other iconic players, you can kind of pinpoint their best moment in their career. Not just, an, not just, I'm not talking one iconic moment, I'm talking where's the club that they excelled the most? What do you, what springs to mind straight away with Zlatan? Where do you think that he's done his best work, so to speak? I think it's harder to, to pin that down with Zlatan than it is to, to say a Ronaldo or, or, or a Messi, or them kind of players. But for Zlatan, where, I don't know, has he underachieved? Possibly. I don't know. Uh, well, the, the, the thing that we've got, obviously, the most decorated active footballer. So, no. But then at the same time, he's not won the World Cup and he's not won the Champions League. Obviously, with Sweden, that is a big ask. Or even the European Championship. It's a big, big ask for one player to carry a team. But we've seen Ronaldo do it. So, you kind of look at Zlatan, you know, through his career. Did he make the right decisions to go to the right clubs at certain times? Because... You know, he was probably in the prime when he did move to Barcelona. Obviously, that didn't work out for whichever reason. But then he went to PSG. Was that the right call for a player that could have been the centre forward for any team in Europe? Yeah, but I mean, what I think we've got to establish as well, when PSG come calling, so does the money, Dave. 
It does, but then with Zlatan, he was always going to get paid. Yeah, but there's paid and then there's paid. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're saying, but but as well, you've got to, I think you've got to look at it from Zlatan's perspective. He's just played at Barcelona for a season. He's probably going to have a hefty amount of cash in the bank. Surely it needs to be about trophies. Well, not trophies. It needs to be about one trophy, the European Cup. Because I think that's where we hold. Why? Why we say okay, right? What you know, Messi's best year was one of the years he won the European Cup. Ronaldo's best years when he won the European Cup, and I think that's we've got to look at it like that. Yeah, because if you say like most, you know, de- decorated, active player, or whatever, you know, you can win domestic trophies in France all you want, but realistically, when you kind of stack up against the other big players. Is anyone going to go? Well, he's won. He's won two league cups in France. No one's really bothered, mm. really. You know, to be honest. So I think that you know, if he hadn't have gone to PSG at that moment, where you know, at that time when he went to PSG, where where do you think he'd have fit in? That would have been an interesting one to see a, a different path that he might have taken. Well, I think that the the big one, obviously, with you know his later years at Manchester United, yeah, potentially that could have been an option. That was around the time they were in a bit of a transitional phase. I think Berbatov got the boot the season after. They could have, he could have been a, been one for them. I think you look at other clubs around Europe. There probably would have been other destinations he could have gone. Could have gone back to Italy, yeah, a little bit faster. Could have been what we've one of those. Obviously, the clubs weren't as competitive at that point. But I just felt like PSG. It was at the start of the, you know, the the the, the build of of the football club. You know, it was when they the money had sort of just come. They were trying to get to the top. They wanted a big name. They went with Zlatan. It just feels like it. It would have been nicer to see him at a club that was properly, properly competitive at the top of Europe for that time. Because we know he's a goal scorer. That's the thing. He scores every single yeah. type of goal. You know, the amount of goals that are in his highlights clips that are ridiculous, the free kicks, the volleys, the overhead kicks, are insane. So wherever he goes, he's going to score goals. There's going to be a manager that finds a system that gets him, you know, to a point of greatness. But did he quite get there? I think that is the, the big question. Did he get to that point where he was the best player in the world at one point in his career? Do you, do you know what would have been nice as well? I was just thinking a bit sort of renaissance period would have been nice for, to see him uh, back at Ajax, you know, in that nice little Ajax team. 2018, you do Santanich's. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, that would have been lovely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they're obviously a very well-run club at the moment. I don't think they've got the budget for someone like Zlatan. Um, but maybe you could go back. You know, I mean, it's, it's still a chance. I, 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 I don't know. I mean, the thing is, what is he, 40 this year? Yeah. I think uh, and he, I, For me, obviously, when he made... You know, he, he did that kind of the classic thing, which we'll probably go into a bit later on when he went to play in the MLS. For me, I thought there's no way back. Like, yeah, once that happened, I was like, well, you know, it's very rare. Yeah, it's very rare that you see someone go to MLS then come back to play at a, you know, mm. he's played at, at Milan now, one of the you know one of the top leagues in Europe still, you know, arguably. So for me, it was like he seems like almost just he, he's never going to age. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I just on the Holy Grail yeah, walk. and I think as, as well, as well <laughs> the, the type of player that he is, I don't necessarily think he needs to be the most mobile. He doesn't have to be someone who depends on pace, that kind of thing. So I just wonder how long he can go on for. But one thing I do want to maybe ask you, Dave, is that, you know, as someone, as a United fan who's had Zlatan at their club, there's always that kind of preconception that he's like, there is that kind of baggage that goes with him and the ego that yeah. follows him and, how much of that do you think is kind of a, a you know a media creation, and how much of that is is true? Did you feel that when you got Zlatan, there was this big, oh my god, we've got this massive personality and this big ego here at Old Trafford now, and everything's got to be geared towards him and centered around him? I know he obviously he was older when he went to United, but did you ever feel that that it was like, oh, it's all got to be about him? No, because he had the ego of Jose Mourinho at that point. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, it was two massive egos yeah. in one dressing room, and you had Wayne Rooney in there that obviously has been there, done it all. And I think that there wasn't as much of a of a expectation on Zlatan to be the main man yeah. with everyone else around him that was still there. Like the, the headlines were about Jose. It was all about Jose's Manchester United, not about Zlatan's Manchester United. And I think he's had that at parts of his career where it is all been about Zlatan. I think it took the pressure off a bit. And, you know, coming into that season when United bought him, he's playing some of his best football at PSG. He was scoring some incredible goals. He looked like he'd matured a little bit. Uh, you know, obviously he's still playing now, but yeah. it looked like there's something to click there. So I'd always, always expected him to score at Manchester United and to do well at United. 26 goals um, in all comps that season. That is a very, very good record for a player. And the, you see good players when they combine Rooney and Zlatan was a great combination. Uh, and it worked for a season. And I think United struggled when Zlatan, you know, dropped off. And then that was something where United never quite got back to that competitive edge. And I think they were, the last time United won trophies was that sleep season, the, the League Cup we mentioned, sorry, the Europa League that we mentioned before and the League Cup final. That was one of the best cup final performances I've seen. Zlatan mm. against Southampton was sensational. Grabbed himself a brace, scored a wonderful free kick. And 
the team was built around him. And I think that's what you can do with Zlatan. But as I sort of mentioned before, was that too late? Should that have come before? Because you imagine Zlatan under Fergie. Yeah. Zlatan in that, that sort of, in that era would have been sensational. Would have been brilliant. I mean, do you, do you f- like, I don't know. You know, obviously, before we're talking about the underachieved kind of element of it, and obviously he went to Barcelona, and we've said, like, we didn't really work out, it didn't click. Do you think he needs to be that main man? Do you think that's obviously the reason why? Because his numbers at Barca weren't bad. Well, that well, like, ties into it as well, doesn't it? As soon as he, Messi was playing down the middle... He said Pep had no bollocks, and then that was the end of it. Really. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he mentioned before about balls. You know that that was the key part part there. But you know, in terms of just looking at his his overall numbers at Barcelona, they were decent in half a season. Um, you know, we're looking at his his goal tally over there: twenty one goals in forty five games. The reason that it didn't work was how do you fit Messi and Zlatan in one team? I think both Four, players two three one just Messi in behind. That's how I do it. <laughs> <laughs> I think you lack a lack defensive work in there, but also you've got to consider Iniesta, Xavi, Busquets Good lads, are at the club. Good lads, <laughs> great great lads, but they were at the club, and it didn't quite work. I think Messi, you know, as much as Messi is this kind of quiet character, it got to a point where it was ego he's versus quiet, ego. any, yeah. but he's one of them like yeah, little jabs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of talk about ego, isn't there? Though this is the thing for me, what, like a clash of ego. Yeah, like everywhere he goes, it seems to be this. It's like you know, conditions got to be perfect for him to. I, sort of thought, I thought I thought that changed a little bit at United because um, he just sort of like looked like he was sort of mentoring, especially like the younger players yeah. like Pogba and Lingard. He was sort of like a father Marcus figure. Marcus Rashford. Marcus Rashford. Yeah. Um, but then he sort of... But like you say, but that's antics. later in his career when yeah. you could argue that, you know, he was past his best. I mean, he's still a great player, but mm. past his best. And is it like, uh, did he almost mature too late? Yeah. Should he have kind of had that element of his of his personality a bit earlier in his career maybe would that have elevated him and gone wow he's actually if he was more of a team player maybe could he have been but then do you lose that edge that he's got of being this mercurial kind of I think I think you look at like that's that summer was a big summer for him yeah he he leaves into Milan after winning Serie A under Jose obviously brilliant team but he leaves that team and joins Barcelona the transfer Etu goes the other way into Milan stick Diego Melito up front becomes the best number nine in, in European that football. That man deserves an episode. And and, and they win the they win the Champions League. I completely agree with that. It'd be um, ten minutes, but it'd be a great episode. It'd be like <laughs> the, the most clinical the most clinical striker I've ever seen for one season. For one season, no ch- like hardly any chances would score goals. Incredible player, but that's the point there that he left Inter Milan. They win the Champions League. Left Barcelona, they win the Champions League. Oh wow. Are you saying it's all his fault? No, so I'm not. I'm not saying what that. What you're saying is, if you want to win the Champions League, get him and then yeah. get rid of him. That's exactly what you do. That's what Man United <laughs> should have done yeah. post the post the Barcelona spell. But I think with that Barca team, I don't think that 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 works with Messi. Messi was pushed out wide right at that point. Guardiola was toying with that idea of playing him through the middle, or had done the previous season uh, of playing that kind of false nine role. That's where Messi had to go. That's where Messi was going to get the ball in dangerous areas. Zlatan was occupying that space. Yeah. They both, in a way, like to received the ball to feet they were both dropping off the line the balance wasn't right in that side you had to move on and I think that's one of the the beautiful things about football you can't just buy 11 superstars and put them in their team you need the water carriers and I think that Barcelona team with Zlatan and Messi didn't have enough work rate and, and desire and determination we saw that I think they, they got knocked out by Chelsea that year horrible Chelsea team super defensive played on the counter attack but Barca didn't have enough to break them down, but also didn't have enough balance to deal with the counter. I think that's what happens when you have Messi and Zlatan. Yeah. Add, it's the point of the show where we're bringing quotes to the table. Ooh, okay. Uh, what have you got for me? You've got a stat, haven't you? I've got a little stat here, which is a, an interesting one. I mean, it seems, you know, in terms of modern day transfers, we've got to kind of cast our minds back a little bit and think about when these transfers happened. But uh, Zlatan was the first player in the history of football to be transferred three times more than 20 million euros uh, <laughs> when he left AC and went to Barca. So he was obviously, you know... That's big money back then. It, it, was, it? it was big money back <laughs> it then. It sounds... The, the crazy thing with football is that's... 20 million, that's nothing. I get you, can't, uh, you can't get anything these days. I get you these days. Maybe John Joe Shelby? Yeah. Good <laughs> God. I mean, um, we've, had, we've had some great moments in this century, but I mean, that is an absolute <laughs> damning statement. <isn't> it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say three quarters of Callum Wilson, so, you know, it's yeah, not really bad. Oh, Jesus um, Christ. Yeah, you know, so... You know, but you look at that. That clearly it was it was always in demand, and people were prepared to keep paying those massive, you know, massive transfer fees for yeah, him. It was massive you know, three John Joe Shelby's. Come on, yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, that just shows that. I mean, clearly people were going to take a punt on him, and 
it wasn't even seen as a punt because you knew <laughs> that he was going to guarantee your goals. Yeah. So it is justified, isn't it, Dave, when you're spending that amount of money three times over for Zlatan Ibrahimovic? Absolutely. You're getting goals. You are getting goals. And it's just like, I don't think they had, he, he had the right manager, really. I think that might have been the, the slight thing in terms of maybe his youth career, working under someone like a Jurgen Klopp. We think the development of Lewandowski. Zlatan and Lewandowski are reasonably similar players, but Lewandowski will give you that work rate. And I think if Zlatan had maybe played under Klopp, bought into that idea, that would have been a massive clash of egos as well. Oh, to think of that. I don't see that do working. You, do yeah. you think he's like, uh, like you say, need, needs the right manager and all that? Do you, do you, even though he's got this kind of very, you know, kind of outwardly quite arrogant and this kind of swaggering sort yeah. of persona that people know him for, do you still think he's one of them players that needs to be told that he's very good? Or does he <laughs> oh, just like, I yeah. am amazing? But do you think people go, yeah, yeah, you are. Yeah. Does he need that like reassurance though? Do you <laughs> I think early on in his career, he probably needed someone to tell him that he's just a striker. Strikers, you know, aren't going to lift you the European Cup. A team is, yeah. And I think that has maybe caused him a little bit of problem. That ego has taken over, and I think managers now with Zlatan, they need egos to deal with him, or he runs the runs the show. Yeah. Right, Stefan Pioli at AC Milan probably takes a bit of a backward seat in the dressing room. Zlatan probably deals with a lot of that stuff there. So I think it's one of these things where his ego has has been. Something that has made him so great, but also slightly hindered him right at that top, top level. Yeah, I bet he ran the place at LA Galaxy, didn't he? Oh, oh, he I bet he was doing I, the canty. I bet he was Cole. Good yeah, I bet he was. I bet he was serving the. Ca- it was. It was all like you know, it was last time related menu yeah. in the canteen. I bet yeah, he was all. Didn't know, like even, you know when you're doing like simple passing drills, I bet it's no, not like that. It's <laughs> like <this. laughs> yeah, I'm gonna redo it now because the way you want to. <laughs> Dave, Definitely. Uh, you, I believe you've got a quote for us. I have uh, a quote from the the, the horse's mouth. I, ha- I well, can't. Dave, no, hang on, Dave. You can't. I uh, see. I see myself similar to similar to that, because we both got big noses. But you can't pull me in my heart. That's that's just really not on. <laughs> uh, just a phrase. Well, nothing as against as people with big noses. Absolutely. I love a love a big nose. Me. So um, <laughs> I can't <laughs> help but laugh at how perfect I am. Right. Now, immediately, I'm thinking of his nose. Yeah. Um, can anyone else take this away from me, please? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're a little bit obsessed with his nose, aren't you? Well, I have got a big nose. Um, I know you, you do you, do you look for Zlatan for inspiration? Oh, it's sort of similar players, really. You know, both <laughs> tall, leggy, um, yeah. flexible, maybe not. But um, I sort of compare myself to that a little bit. Do you would um, treat a... Uh, go down to Arsenal, do a trial at Arsenal. Do you reckon you'd do that or not? Do you think it's too, too much for you? I couldn't look past staying at Birmingham City but well, anyway well, he, he famously said at the Arsenal trial that he doesn't do auditions that mm. was it when he, when he said yeah. that I don't do auditions and so this was like pre, this was like he hadn't set, established himself had he no but also I do think that obviously when he went to LA Galaxy and he was kind of in that you know in, in America if you wanted to break Hollywood that was an issue because he's kind of you know he's nixed any idea of getting a film he doesn't do, doesn't do auditions so I'm thinking <laughs> he's shut that door hasn't he you know what I mean if, if he wants to transition maybe to movies at some point if they want him for a screen test, it ain't not, not happening with that. But if, if we ever want to look at like sort of a microcosm that sums up his career, when he made his debut in a derby against LAFC, I mean the goal from the halfway line. I think he scored. A, I think he scored a hat trick that day. They it, won it, it almost was like he was playing against children. Yeah. Uh, in his spell in the MLS, the, the the goals that he scored were ridiculous. There was that one from the halfway. There was the one where he flicked the ball over the head of the defender. Then it's a bicycle kick. Yeah. Another one where he controls it, flicks it back over the defender, then volleys it from like 30 yards. Like Again, for Zlatan, I think he's ma- he made the wrong moves at the wrong time. Like He was too good for the MLS at that point. Yeah. No disrespect to the MLS, but Zlatan is still offering something for AC Milan, as we mentioned previously. Like That seems like a payday, end of his career type vibe. He's just not there yet. No. He's really not there yet. And I think you've got to look at his, I believe his wife's his agent. Has she made the decisions that's been the best for Zlatan's career? You know, there's big links with Mina Raiola. We've seen so many wife, big players fail under Mina Raiola. <laughs> well, well, the thing, like, I feel like, Will, you're quite sort of, you know, you get quite, you know, you're, you're romanticise his time in, yeah, in LA. Yeah. I think you quite like it, don't you, in a way? Well, I do, but then... When we were having a chat off air and, you, and people were saying, what was Latan's most iconic moment? I couldn't get past the Tyrone Mings sort of when he got stamped on. So, yes and no to that. I bet uh, Tyrone Mings would be happy that he got in Latan's most iconic moment. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I mean, let's just do 10 minutes on that. I but, mean, but as well, like, I think Zlatan is muddying his legacy at certain points. I think the thing with Lukaku recently was pretty disgusting. It was a horrible exchange, something that you don't really want to see for, from two professionals. You know, if that happened in the office, disciplinary. Yeah. There's there's words being said, yeah. and and the the choice of words that Zlatan used, you know, terrible. 
terrible choice of words. Whether he's got previous with Romelu Lukaku, which they probably did, I because they, were, they play together. They play together at United, yeah. Um, Zlatan was injured when Man United bought Romelu Lukaku Not, yeah. and was seen as the replacement, and I think Zlatan didn't like that. There's, you know, there's potential breakdowns in the camp because of that. You know, Pogba and Zlatan were very close. Lukaku coming in. You know, you th- that's the other thing with Zlatan. Does he create? If there is other players that come in that think they can challenge his throne, does that create massive divisions in the team? I think maybe, or like you alluded to earlier, I think maybe more so back in the day. But I mean, I watched an interview with him and he was talking about, especially in his later career, he likes a challenge. So like he's gone to Milan because people have said, you've been to America, you can't do it. So, I mean, if Milan want a challenge, they're going to have to get someone that's better than yeah. Zlatan, aren't they? Difficult. Raphael Liao looks like a very good little player, though. I mean, maybe I one mean, day. J- with the MLS thing, just just to quite kind of just go back to that, you know, we're talking about his, his numbers and all these great amount of goals that he scored, but the MLS thing is just very much padding the numbers, isn't it, really? Cause <laughs> what, a bit Pele-esque? Well, yeah, to an extent, because, you know, you can marvel at how great he was for uh, LA Galaxy and all this, and oh, wow. But let's not forget some of the players that have gone from the Premier League to MLS and, and done amazing things. Darren Huckabee was unbelievable. He was unbelievable. Bradley, Bradley Wright yeah, Phillips. Yeah, Bradley, Bradley Wright Basically Phillips. like the next Messi. Yeah, He's the leading scorer, isn't he? I mean, Robbie Keane, obviously, was a great player yeah, anyway, yeah. but he went to the MLS in his later stage of his career. Maybe that's what amazing. motivated Zlatan. He saw Darren Huckabee's numbers yeah. and he was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That, that's probably the reason why. I went, I, I, you know, the millions of dollars were probably nothing to do with it. It's more about taking Darren Huckabee down. <laughs> uh, knock him down a peg or two. Uh, but no, I don't, I don't know. I just think that that's not, for me, it's not going to, you know, put a mark against him in terms of uh, how iconic a player he was, and, and we should obviously kind of classify him in that top bracket. Yeah. At the end of the day, he wanted to pay at, at the end of his career. No one's going to, you know, everyone would but do did it. He, that's the thing. Like, we, we, we keep talking about payday decisions in career, right? He went to PSG for a payday. Yeah. Why has he got to go to LA for a payday? Look, if you don't like his wife, just come out and say <laughs> it. <laughs> She's an older lady. She's more mature. Oh, good God! <laughs> wow. She is. It's one of those. It's what, I'm a bit like she's she's fifty and Zlatan's nearly nothing forty. Wrong with that, Dave. Uh, nothing, nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying there's anything wrong nothing with wrong it. Nothing wrong I just like to distance myself from Dave's comments. <laughs> <laughs> nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying there is anything wrong <laughs> with it. Just, <laughs> what I, what I'm saying here is I'm just saying decision wise, right? So the the back end of that Milan uh, you know season, for, uh, 35 goals in 44 games. Then he leaves for PSG. His last year at PSG he scores 50 and 51 games, but you think in terms of European uh, competitions, best season came in the 13-14 season, scored 10 goals in eight Champions League games. That was probably pr- prime Zlatan. That's when he needed to be at a competitive team. Yeah. Uh, that's where he needed to potentially be at Juve. Yeah. Juve at that time were disgraceful. Is that when they had Mandu? <laughs> we're talking uh, Allegri, that the, the season after they got to the final with um, with Paul Pogba, with Vidal. Oh, right. yeah. That is the team. So there was a place I for I was him. thinking, what team should Zlatan have gone to? Should have gone back to Juve. Yeah. Would have been a bit of a controversy, obviously, playing for Juve Milan, Inter Milan. You know, he's done the whole thing. Yeah, he, he, he doesn't really care. He he does does but but that's, that could have been the club for him. Yeah. Um, you know, instead of getting Gonzalo Higuain, mm. brings Zlatan back home. Yeah, but then there's probably a reason Juventus didn't go for him. Well, probably, but I think that could have been a perfect mix for him because yeah. they, they needed someone like that. You know, they went from Higuain to Ronaldo. They were looking for that final piece yeah. in their jigsaw. Could have been Zlatan. Um, gents, we have got about 25 minutes in and Adam, we've not mentioned... Well, it's time to mention the most iconic moments and I'm going to start with you because I think you've got mine. Yeah, well, I'm going to go for one that I think immediately springs to mind is the overhead kick, yeah. Sweden versus England, when he scored four goals in the game as well, which is just... I mean, it was it was a masterclass, wasn't it? That game. It was that was. I think for a lot of people who maybe hadn't seen Zlatan that much, and he, he was more of a, you know, a meme. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, where it was kind of people were I like, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Zlatan was more of a character than a footballer to a lot of people in in some ways. Um, and you that night, you just saw him do his thing, and it was just unbelievable. Now, I did pick that as an <laughs> iconic moment, but then kind of looking looking into it a little bit more, not to take away too much from him, but no, no. the t- the England team that night was. Was a disgrace. <laughs> uh, let me just run through the team. Like I, I just did a little bit of research on this, just to run through the team. We had Joe Hart in net, Glenn Johnson, who was subbed, who came off to replace by Carl Jenkinson. Good God! Yeah, Stephen Colker at the back, who was replaced by Ryan Shawcross, Gary Cahill, Leighton Baines, Fair. Tom Cleverley, oh. great player, who was then replaced by Jack Wilshire. Steven Gerrard, who was replaced by Tom Huddleston. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Leon Osman. 
I mean, listen. Whoa, 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 whoa. Nothing wrong with Leon Osman. I won't have you. A bad word. This is. I'm not. This is no disrespect to any of these players. They're all good, you know, established Premier League players. I was just a bit stunned. No, yeah. Ashley Young replaced by Daniel Sturridge. Raheem Sterling replaced by Wilfred Zaha and Danny Welbeck. So listen. Not a stellar lineup for England. Oh, yeah, but the, the Swedish team wouldn't have been great. Maybe Andreas Svensson. Svensson. Uh, still playing? Yeah, I think I think Granquist was playing. Granquist um, and Jonas Olsen. Um, yeah, so, see, top yeah, quality so, internationals I mean, we, we, there. You know, Martin, we're, Martin Olsen. We're talking like you know Wigan and West Brom centre backs here. So you know, we're, you know, the <laughs> creme, mean, creme yeah. de la creme. Sure, cross to be replaced by Stephen Corker. Yeah, I think we, that sums up the argument. Yeah, it? but I mean, listen, technique wise, you can't argue with it, the, especially the overhead kick that went that, that went straight over Joe Hart. Would he have got the space if he'd have had a Rio Ferdinand or John Terry closing him down? Well, the the chaos across. wouldn't be there as well, would there? It was literally like, <laughs> everyone was like, what's going on? Um, you know, no, and that's not, I'm not taking, not taking it away from Zlatan, but I just wonder, you know, there wasn't anything, that's, you know, in, in a more like, you know, there was more at stake in a game, would he have got the space? Listen, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm not. No, I'm with you, I'm with you. But I'll I'm say what you, that, that lineup is an absolute disgrace. I think it was a great goal yeah. for Swedish football and it was a fully de- well-deserved goal, outplayed them on the night and Zlatan with a magic, bit, of, bit of magic, eh? It, it was. It, and it, it, more than anything, it was just the audacity that he, uh, you know, yeah. that he actually tried that. And that's what you, you know, for me, with, with Zlatan, we talk about iconic players. Uh, what I love about him is the fact you don't know what you're going to get. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's very rare that you get players that are those, like, as I mentioned before, the Mavericks, the Mercurial figures. There's not enough of them in football anymore because I think a lot of the time they get discouraged from doing it. Yeah. Plus, no one wants to take a risk because you, you just look an idiot if it don't come off. And, you know, there's mm. so much at stake now in games that if you try something that's a little bit flamboyant <laughs> or, a, or something that's got this kind of a flair touch to it and it doesn't work, you go, right, well, you've cost us the game, yeah. potentially millions of quid. So, you know, it just doesn't happen as much anymore. No, I think that's great. But do you think that's m- down to, like, he grew up in a non-social media area? As well? well, he's Latin, isn't he? So No, know. but I know what you mean. Like, when he came through, there was probably less pressure to kind of adhere to kind of certain rules or tactics you or whatever. comparing yourself. Yeah, well. and, you, and you know, and he was very much probably in, encouraged to kind of, well, mm. that's the kind of player that I am. And, you know, y- you wonder now if coaches are kind of maybe taking some of that out of the game with the y- younger players or younger players are, are worried about looking stupid or yeah. not coming off. I'm not going to not get a chance to be, you know, especially the bigger clubs when it, for youth players to come through, it's harder, isn't it? But yeah, I think that for him to even try that is just... I remember the audacity is it is, is pretty it, incredible. It's crazy. It's one of the best goals I've seen. Prime but it went time ITV like, as well. I couldn't believe it. What was that? Prime time ITV as well. Uh, so you've got the eyes. I mean, on mate, the, the viewers they pulled in from that. Wow. Exactly. Um, do you know what I want to do? Just dead quick as well. Yeah. We know you mentioned the quotes before, Dave. With yeah. the, uh, the, I've got a little, a few little quotes here that oh. I want to try and run past you boys. But there's a little slight twist to it. Oh god. So it's a little, like a little bit of a game where I've got some quotes. Now you've got to decide if it's Latan or someone else who said this, right, okay. So the first one is, uh, if you drive a Ferrari, you put premium petrol in the tank, hit the motorway, and you step on the gas. He filled up with diesel and took a spin in the countryside. He should have bought a Fiat. Is that Jeremy Clarkson talking about James May on Top Gear, or is it Zlatan talking about Pep? I think it's Clarkson because... Um, is Latan's quite business savvy and there was a lot of brands mentioned in there and I think he didn't <laughs> want to be paid to uh, mention <laughs> yeah. those brands Fiat Bracket or any other yeah, reputable yeah. car company I think he said something similar about Pep I'm going to go with Zlatan it is Zlatan oh it is no. Zlatan about Pep ok 1-0 oh, to Dave <laughs> right ok uh, the next one the measure of a man is what he does with power is that Zlatan or is it Plato <laughs> I think that's Plato. I think Plato. It is Plato. It is, but it's not inconceivable that it would be Zlatan. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. Uh, okay. It uh, was too smart for Zlatan. Yeah. The next one. Um, it is possible for ordinary people to choose to be extraordinary. Is that Zlatan or Elon Musk? Oh, don't get Dave started on Elon Musk. We'll have some <laughs> Bitcoin referral codes out in a yeah, second. Anybody <laughs> some Bitcoin? <laughs> use, the, use the code Statman20. <laughs> <laughs> I wish one day we'll get the Bitcoin deal. Um, <laughs> to be paid in Bitcoin. I'm going to go... I'll go Zlatan just because I know Dave will go Musk. Could you read it again? It, it, is possible for, <laughs> it is possible for ordinary people to choose to be extraordinary. I don't think that's Latin mentality. <laughs> he thinks he's special, like a superhero. You going Musk? I'm gonna go Musk. It is Musk. Oh, uh, well, uh, no, he's and won. the final one. Oh, go on. Come on, Will. Just to, you yeah, need yeah. to get. I mean, it's embarrassing. This. Need Dave, Dave's won, but yeah, you need to. Need you some know, fantasy points. Yeah, just for sort of dignity. Uh, last one. I came like a king, 
left like a legend? Is that Zlatan or is it WWE superstar Ric Flair? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were really you tugging at my heartstrings here. Right? <laughs> Proper egg on the <laughs> face here, mate. Do that one again, sorry, Pop. I came like <laughs> I came like a king, left like a legend. I don't think Ric Flair has ever referred to himself as a king because that is Triple H's sort of mantra. Ooh. Uh, is mantra Ooh. a word? Mantra. 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 <laughs> so I'm going to go for Zlatan Ibrahimovic. What are you saying? I now? think I've heard that quote before and I think it's Zlatan. No, you, oh, you, can, you can go second every time. <laughs> yeah. It's like a <laughs> game of tennis. <laughs> <laughs> He's, it is Zlatan. It, it is Zlatan. A little uh, slug, David. Referring to his time at PSG. Uh, I believe so. There you go. But uh, again, it's not inconceivable that it would be something that Ric Flair would say. So you know, exactly. All of just them. It, it just shows how you know, sort of confident Zlatan was in terms of what, like you say, any of those could have been applicable to him. But as well, that reference of like Zlatan doesn't class himself as an ordinary man. <laughs> <laughs> that was the reasoning behind one of those quotes, and that was right. That is absolutely crazy. Right, gents, it's now time for Dave's iconic moment of Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Obviously, a lot of good goals. Mm. But I think there was one that stands out by an absolute sore thumb for Ajax against NAC Breda. You guys have seen the goal? Yep. Waltzes through. Dances. The thing that I quite like about it, though, Pro Evolution Soccer, a bit of a throwback. Biggest trick you used to pull, the square X. Oh, yeah. Shoot to, to pass a little oh, bit of a shot fake. Yeah. Th- when Zlatan waltzes through, it literally square X is one guy, square X is the other guy, square X is the other and then just... <laughs> destroys the keeper as well it, it's embarrassing he's he's done so much in his career Dave and that and that is your iconic moment for him the greatest player never to win the European Cup I think that's Strength. why that's the greatest moment yeah. because that was young Zlatan what could he accomplish in the game his potential was unreal again mentioned before PlayStation player yeah Pez player a Pez player oh. Right, gents, it's now time for the most uh, important moment of this podcast. Uh, We're building up a list. Uh, Some would argue the positions on the list, um, but we've got to rate Zlatan. Three topics we're going to rate him on. Would we go to the pub with him? Uh, Five aside, would we have him in our team? And just how iconic was he in the 21st century? Whoa, stop what you're doing there. If you want to listen to the full podcast, click the link in the description down below and you can hear what we really think of Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Thank you for watching. Make sure you hit that like button, drop a subscribe and get in the comments down below. What would you rate this footballer out of 90? Would you take him for a pint? Probably not.